Hello my Slapdashers, I am Aaron the Slapdash Cook, coming to you from the Slapdash Kitchen. We all know not everyone is born knowing how to cook, and a lot of people, maybe men like myself, have struggled in the kitchen, but I think I'm ready to share my knowledge with you. The goal here is to look at simple American dishes and look at ways to improve them and kick them up with some extra finesse and flavor. So let's get into it. Hold on to your aprons. Today we're making slapdash meatloaf and mashed potatoes. Meatloaf and mashed potatoes are a staple of dinner tables across America. I know it's one of my favorite dishes, but it can be polarizing. So I'm gonna show you some ways to turn this bland American yuck into a big yum. You'll need two pounds of meat. I prefer one pound of sausage and one pound of beef. Two pounds of beef, oh boy. It's like a big brick of beef and super greasy. So I like to mix it with another pound of turkey or sausage. Today I'm doing a mixture of beef and sausage. One packet of onion soup mix, 3 fourth cup of breadcrumbs. A gluten-free trick for you if you're into the gluten freedom. If you have some rice or corn cereal around, you can crush that up into a 3 fourth cup and use it instead of the breadcrumbs. It'll work as a great binding agent. Two eggs and 3 fourth cup water. And now it's everybody's favorite time, Slapdash Secrets. Secrets! Instead of ketchup, use barbecue sauce. It really helps improve the flavor and brings that oh-so-nice barbecue flavor. And a couple spoonfuls of brown sugar makes the meatloaf go down. This cuts down on some of the acid and brings a sweetness. Some additives to really improve this loaf. Add one chopped bell pepper and it will be finely chopped. This will really add some flavor along with another color and it's a good way to sneak in a veggie to something so meaty. And like all of my dishes, I like to spice the heck out of it. Adding chili powder, salt, pepper, basil, oregano, and paprika. You'll see that I add dashes of a lot of spices, but if you wanted to measure, about a teaspoon each will do. For the mashed potatoes, I'm using eight medium-sized baking potatoes of the white Idaho variety. You want to make sure they're skinned and chopped into thirds. For these good old American spuds, you'll need some milk, butter, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion, and shredded cheese for mashed potatoes like you've never seen before. All right, let's get this meatloaf rolling by throwing everything in the bowl. And once you're done putting everything in, or maybe you have a speed up cam at home just like I do, you mix all the ingredients together. This is some tough meat, I tell ya. Kind of have to stab it a little bit. Once you know it, I'm a dummy. I forgot two eggs. This is a good lesson that you really need the eggs to bind everything together or else it won't really mix properly. Might not look very appetizing right now, but I promise you this will be the best loaf of your life. It's good to see the green in there from the bell peppers, helps add a color, and like I said, helps sneak a veggie in. I would say this loaf is pretty well combined. Everything's kind of sticking together and it's well lubricated with the eggs. So what you'll need to do from here is you'll want to get a loaf pan, something like a bread loaf pan will work. I have a very special meatloaf pan on the side it says meatloaf lifter. So how cool is that? Uh, so what this does is it helps uh, lift the meatloaf out to let the grease escape because the big battle here from here on out with the meatloaf is going to be the grease. Grease is the word that you've heard. So you want to help uh, lube the sides of this pan to make sure that the meatloaf doesn't burn and stick to the side of it. So just a couple sprays with the cooking spray do a lot of good. Then transfer meatloaf into the pan. Isn't that a beautiful sight? I like to kind of 
beat my meat down into this pan, uh, the great thing is I think it looks like a very lovely meat cake. Okay, that looks like a good loaf to me. Our meat cake is all nice and compact. So I'm going to put this big American loaf in the oven at 350 for about 70 minutes. We'll see how it shakes out. And while the loaf is in the oven, this is a great time to do the mashed potatoes and multitask. So what you're going to want to do is get your pan out and bring water to a boil. You're probably going to have about three to four cups of water in there. Bring it to a boil and then once it's at a boil, put your potato chunks in there and cover. Slightly reduce the heat to about medium heat and let it percolate in there for about 20 minutes. You're going to want to make sure that they simmer until they're tender. I test this by seeing how easily they fall apart when struck with a fork or spatula. When they're done, drain through a strainer and return to the pan. Pour in the milk, butter, salt, and pepper. Then mash and mix away until all the lumps are gone and it's a creamy, mashy dream. For some extra pizzazz and flavor, I like to add chopped onions and shredded cheese. And if you don't want to go through the effort of all this mashing, stick the potatoes on a baking sheet in the oven for an hour at 350 along with the meatloaf. And there you have it. You have baked potatoes and they're just as good. All right, slap dashers, get out those oven mitts. Our meatloaf has been in the oven for 70 minutes, so let's take a look at what's going on. Hello, meatloaf. I would do anything for love, but I would do this. Our meatloaf is looking good. As you'll see, it has a nice thorough bake on it and it has uh, some nice browning at the top. I'm a fan of a solid loaf because I feel if it's undercooked or maybe not cooked long enough, it can really fall apart and then you'll have a messy loaf. So let's take a look at my magic pan. As you will see, grease is the word with this recipe. A lot of that grease has come to the top. Throughout the bake, if you want to, you can try to drain the grease over the trash, but sometimes if you're not careful, the meatloaf can fall into the trash or onto the floor. That caused a fit for me a couple years ago. So getting a meatloaf pan like this would be a fantastic idea. So just gonna show you what it does when you lift it out. You'll see a lot of that grease can kind of drain off. Now, since there's pork in here, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it is well beyond 170. Say, ah! We are well beyond 170 at 185, so I am very pleased. So let's take the loaf out, put it on our plate, try to get some of the grease dripped off as much as possible. Plop that loaf onto here. As you can see, the biggest battle with this dish is the grease, so lots of grease in there. So it's good that we were able to get that properly drained off. I've had a lot of greasy meatloafs, it's not fun. And if you wanna get some of that excess grease off the top, you can just kind of pat it with a paper towel. And we've probably all had a ketchup glaze on top of our family meatloaf. I like to go the extra mile by putting on some barbecue sauce, so I would just squirt some barbecue sauce on here. And spread with a butter knife. Think of this as the frosting on your meat cake. After the glaze is on top, slice up the loaf and serve to your hungry American family with a side of heaping mashed potatoes and a vegetable of your choice. Meatloaf and mashed potatoes are standards of the American dinner table, but you can take it from simple to stupendous just by adding your own ingredients and getting all slapdashy. This was actually my mom's recipe that I've added to, so perhaps a good move is finding a family recipe that you can improve. And now, the most important time of day, it's time for a cocktail. You've earned it. Thank you for watching the Slapdash course on meatloaf. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I am on social media, on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Keep it slapdashy.